Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, this episode of Meet the Faculty. I am Robert Tabukai. I am joined today by Professor Jeffrey Evans. Uh, Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing pretty good that you're here. Um, so yes, today you're going to get to know you, who you are, what you do in the RC. We just want to get to know the person, you know, behind, you know, the Professor Jeffrey Evans label. So um, I guess my first question to you is what made you want to become a professor in the first place? Uh, what led you to that? What are some of your goals in life in terms of being a professor? And then what do you explore academically uh, in your professorship? What made me want to go into, uh, let's say, college teaching um, is that I was really interested in, um, first, I knew I, I would have to have what they call a terminal degree. And in my field, that's a, a PhD. And so um, I thought early on that uh, having a degree like that would, would give me actually the ability to pursue my own interests in my work. And this is something that you know, any of us on the faculty would say um, is a, a huge privilege for us. We are uh, able to, uh, to teach uh, largely what we would, would like to teach or in the way we'd like to teach it and, um, and also pursue research and writing and, and uh, um, keeping up in uh, uh, areas of interest. Um, so that's really why I wanted to, to uh, attain that kind of academic degree, be an academic, which implies um, uh, teaching. And I always did want to teach. I enjoy, um, enjoy, enjoy teaching, enjoy young people. And, um, and when we get around to talking about the first year seminar, I can say more about why that's been uh, one of my favorite classes, um, really, because I can, as a psychologist, um, you know, I've, I've been trained in uh, counseling and psychotherapy and I've done um, college counseling. And one of my internships was at uh, the counseling center, which no longer exists, but it, it merged with counseling services uh, over in the union. And um, uh, so I'm very interested in, uh, in human development and people's uh, psychological development, emotional, cognitive development and um, uh, in particular young people and making the transition from, uh, from high school to college. So every, uh, every year when I teach a first year seminar in the fall, I have around 15 uh, young people who are making that transition and have similar kinds of uh, anxieties and excitements about, about doing that. So being part of that and helping ease the way from, uh, from high school to college. Uh, is really a lot of fun for me. Yeah, and you did mention earlier your first year seminar, uh, Topics in the Science of Creativity in the Arts. Could you go into that class? Um, what are some of the goals of that class? What do you uh, explore, just the topics and concepts and ideas? And I guess, how do you use that class as a vehicle, I guess, to train students to be good writers as it is a first year seminar in writing? Yeah, right, right. Um, well, all of the first year seminars, of course, are writing courses and, um, uh, and each of us uh, among the faculty approach writing um, in our own way, but also being very mindful that this is a way for students to, um, to learn how to, or to develop further their writing skills uh, that are gonna be required of them throughout their, their four years uh, and beyond. So um, expository writing, um, and then from that writing, uh, some of which is personal writing. And in my case, writing about creativity, my my feeling uh, and what I try to teach, one of the main, uh, the main messages of my class is that, that creativity uh, and the creative process is, is very personal. It's really putting yourself out there. Um, and if you read about and talk about, as we do, um, you know, reading about artists and reading material 
um, by and about artists, you find that that the the main struggles of being a, a creative person uh, is, you know, how do I translate what my thoughts and feelings, which are of course very personal and interior, um, into a uh, into something that can be shared. Um, and sometimes this is, you know, one's livelihood depends on this being able to to share in a way that uh, an audience of whatever kind. Um, will appreciate. So the writing part uh, does double duty um, because it, I'm asking the students to both to process and think about on paper um, the material that we're talking about. And if we're talking about a particular um, a particular artist, like in that course, we talk about Twyla Tharp, the, uh, the famous uh, modern dancer, choreographer, and uh, Picasso um, also, uh, and I can talk a little bit more about those, but what I, one of the things I emphasize is they're writing about it in a way that really shares their, their thoughts and feelings, things that they've thought about, considered, discussed with others, um, and refined in a way so that it's, um, it comes across in a way that, that makes me want to read it and that other people, that makes, uh, um, induces other people to want to read. So how do, you, how do you write this paper in first year seminar and make it interesting? Um, you know, not just cover the material, cover the assignment, but make it interesting, make it fresh, um, make it, uh, and one of the ways to be interesting is to, um, is to convey who I am as a person, um, what my own personal take is, or personal uh, point of view uh, is. That's um, uh, because that's going to be in many ways unique. Because each of us as an individual, each of us is unique. Uh, though of course we share a lot, and that gets into a whole lot of psychology and uh, other other things about uniqueness, uh, individuality versus, uh, uh, or in, in, uh, um, in conversation with the collective, right? And uh, which brings to mind something, I'll just say really quickly, the, the extent to which creativity is not just a private affair. Uh, I, I've, so far I've said, I've used words like interior and individual and, but, you know, you talk to working creative people and they'll be the first ones to talk about, um, to give credit to the people that have um, influenced them and to their forebears, to their teachers, um, to the other artists or scientists who had great ideas that they have uh, incorporated and um, and included in their own development, and uh, and sometimes quoted. Um, so so that's important. It's important the extent to which uh, creativity and the creative process is a collective um, event, uh, um, as well as as well as individual. I kind of wanted to go back though to um, Tharp and Picasso. Why are those two figures, those two artists, people that you focus on, why of all right. the possible people you could choose to focus on, is it them a, a painter and a dancer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, cho I choose um, people like Tharp because of her ability to, to be very articulate um, and also her visibility. Um, you can, we can watch um, well, videotape of her going all the way back to the 1960s when she first started. She's in her 80s now, and she's still um, directing uh, other dancers. And also, there was another thing about her uh, that I really wanted my students to think a lot about, and that is she talks about um, strategies for being creative. And this also applies to 
the uh, book on Picasso that we that we read. But how do you? What are your? I have the students think about this a lot, and especially um, during the pandemic, but also even before that, students transitioning from high school to college. What have been your strategies uh, for? If you don't think of yourself as creative, I don't care. <laughs> um, I'm here to tell you that you are. I mean, you you may discover that by the time the class is over. But what did let's look at it in whatever terms you think of yourself as. So, what are your strategies to produce what you think of as your best work? So, reading Tharp is all about her strategies. Um, her strategies for everything from getting out of bed in the morning to um, to coming up with new ideas. And with Picasso, there is a, one of my, my favorite uh, psychologists um, is Rudolf Arnheim. He knew a lot about Picasso. He became very interested in uh, the process that Picasso, um, his, Picasso's creative process. And he was fortunate enough to be able to have access to um, all the sketches that Picasso um, uh, created on his on the way to his huge mural called Guernica, which some some of you may know, some of you may have up on your wall. Uh, it's um, so the the Picasso family gave Arnheim the uh, access to all of these sketches, and so the book is really presents each sketch in. I think there are about eighty five of them. Uh, in order, and Arnheim um, writes a commentary about what Picasso may have been going through at the time that he did this sketch in this particular way um, in order to continue to develop uh, his vision of what he wanted to, uh, what he wanted the mural, the final mural to be.